In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Recognizing and treating liver diseases of all kinds is the job of my guest in the studio today, Dr. Rajan Somasundaran. Thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Somasundaran, alcohol is bad for the liver, we know that, but can you please be more specific how much alcohol is harmful? Well, that's a question many, many patients address us and they ask us and there's no definite threshold. We just, uh, we just, just suggest that you know, 30 grams alcohol, that means let's say um, three glasses of wine daily intake uh, at this point, you might damage your liver. But for it's, there's a gender difference. Uh, women um, might just uh, drink less alcohol than that and uh, suffer from chronic liver disease. Mm -hmm. So three glasses at most for men and women much less, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, are there ethnic differences? Are there differences between ethnical groups when it comes to their alcohol tolerance and their liver? There is de uh, definitely there is uh, there are e ethnic differences. For example, in Japan, uh, people tolerate uh, due to a different metabolism uh, much less alcohol than it, that might be in other countries. So, but you can't rely on that. So, just be careful when drinking. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't mix alcohol and medication. How bad is it really if you do? There are many differences and uh, many ma medications may be taken even if you uh, drank a glass of wine uh, at the weekend. But uh, actually our recommendation is quit the alcohol uh, when you take your medication. If you have a long-term medication, talk to your doctor and ask him what kind of alcohol you can drink, how much alcohol can you drink. Mm -hmm. He will tell you. Medication in general, which kinds are harmful and how much of it? In fact, most of the medications you take we ta uh, cause, may cause liver damage. And so what, what we do is we recommend the patient uh, to take care of that, uh, ask the doctor once again, okay, uh, there's written this might cause uh, liver damage, so just uh, um, check the blood tests uh, for liver function. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know if your liver might be damaged? Are there any warning signals? Unfortunately not, especially the chronic liver disease, that's, that's our real problem, not the acute hepatitis. The acute hepatitis will diagnose pretty, pretty fast, but the chronic, chronic liver diseases, uh, as caused by hepatitis viruses, they, uh, they often just, the patients complain of uh, fatigue, for example, but not, that's not very specific, as you know. So, should you have regular checkups? You should, especially if you're living in a so-called endemic area, in an uh, area where hepatitis B, for example, or hepatitis C is very common. That's Asia, that's Africa, but also in the Western countries and uh, Eastern Europe. Um, so if you have also relatives uh, who have a past medical history on that. Mm -hmm. So what kind of checkups? Uh, blood that's tests? Or? Just blood tests. Just go to your doctor. Tell him, okay, is it possible I, I might suffer from hepatitis B or C or have a liver damage? He will check that by blood test. Dr. Zomazundaram, what are these new medications that are said to help with hepatitis C? Well, we have, right now we have two medications, that's the interference and the ribavirin, that's an antiviral drug we use. And uh, upcoming are just a protease and polymerase inhibitors, which we know from the AIDS therapy, and hopefully they will be approved end of the year or beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. So, so there is some hope? There is some hope, at least for some patients, not for every patient, because we have different genotypes. So, uh, but ask your doctor, he will tell you. Mm -hmm. Why is it that hepatitis C is so dangerous and so difficult to treat? Hepatitis C causes chronic liver disease, and that means um, many of those patients may develop um, liver cirrhosis, the end stage of uh, chronic liver disease. So we have to treat it, and the, uh, the problem with the treatment is uh, the treatment is tolerated, but not of all the time very well tolerated. So we have the side effects, we have to deal with the side effects. And uh, that means one and a half years for some patients, uh, side effects. So you, you're best off to avoid these diseases altogether. Can you sum up for us, how are hepatitis B and C transmitted and what can you do? What should you watch out for to protect yourself? The first thing is hepatitis B, if you go th through that, uh, it's, uh, it's transmitted usually worldwide, if you see that worldwide, uh, by, from mother to child during birth, that's the first. The second is hepatitis B, uh, for, the, uh, for the elder uh, people, it's, uh, it's transmitted by sexual transmission. And uh, hepatitis C is a blood-borne disease, uh, which is 
usually transmitted if you di have direct uh, blood contact, for example, blood transfusions. Those, those who have blood transfusions or had blood transfusions in former times, they should check for hepatitis C, for example. Mm -hmm. So for protection? For protection, uh, the main protection is actually for hepatitis B, Vaccinate, vaccination, vaccination, vaccination for all family members and we all, all the programs all over the world, they um, tell vaccinate. Children as, as well? Children, children as well and children are vaccinated even now in the Western countries uh, from the very beginning on. The next uh, step um, is to take care for the, uh, for the elderly, use uh, condoms, for example, for sexual intercourse, that's, that's really important. And for hepatitis C, uh, the, the uh, transmission rate is not as high, but you, but you should take uh, uh, equal measure, measures, actually. We have no vaccination for hepatitis C, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful, blood transfusions. Um, our viewer Ali Zani from Ghana has written to us. He would like to know how to treat hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is always just a disease also uh, which is stigmatized and uh, patients uh, don't want to tell actually the neighbors I'm, I'm suffering from hepatitis B. So that's a really important question. We, we want to treat that and uh, so we're treating that by medication, for example, by tablets or we can, for some patients, we can use even um, interference or otherwise the so-called nucleoside analogs or nucleotide analogs. So don't worry, make sure you see your doctor. It's a disease that can be well managed. It basically. can be managed definitely and you should take care uh, of the complications of this disease, for example HCC or um, um, for liver cirrhosis and the complications. Mm -hmm. HCC being liver cancer. Uh, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked a lot about hepatitis B and C. Quickly, hepatitis A and E, um, how are they transmitted and how do you protect yourself? Actually, they are transmitted by contaminated food, for example, um, because that's a so-called fecal-oral transmission. So it's a matter of hygiene and you can be vaccinated against hepatitis A. You should be vaccinated against that hepatitis E. We don't have a vaccination, but it, the course is quite, quite well tolerated. Pregnant women are uh, uh, pretty, uh, uh, they should be, take care uh, mm -hmm. to develop hepatitis E. So make e. sure you ask your doctor about a vaccination. Thank you for being with us today. Thank Thanks you. for your time.